Hiya. Well, my hand, my arm was off there when I was saying that. Hello. But that's for both of us. That's a big hand. It's as big as your face on the camera. It's because of perspective. And that's the first lesson of today. No, put it oh, down. Sorry. Okay. Uh, we've got three new stories straight up for you from the can because we haven't done that for ages, have we? No. No. The last time. It's we a did. new lesson in love. We're gonna make musical love. And that's the second lesson. So we've already on two lessons nice. and we've got three new stories. This video is bursting with energy. And you know, education. You can't see my hand when it's over there, it's really bothering me. Uh, and education. Okay, right. We okay, should learn. we get to the first one? Yeah, we may as well. We, yo, we may as well. Yup. Yo. Okay. Monkey urinates on Zambian president. What a headline. I know, I like it. This one doesn't have really much information, but we thought some things were funny about it, such as the fact that a monkey was whizzing all over a Zambian president. So, uh, a, a monkey comedy. urinated on a Zambian president. What's that mean? You read this one. What? I'm not so good with these words. A monkey urinated on Zambian president Rupia Banda as he spoke to journalists at a news conference on Wednesday. Banda softly shouted, <laughs> He you softly shouted. You have urinated on my jacket. He softly shouted. I oh, can yeah. kind of imagine that of a urination president. No, yes. of a Zambian president. I can kind of imagine him softly shouting. He has a mild temperament. Yes, I like it. Isn't Zambia a bit of a shithole? You're not going to be too healthy if you live there. That's all I'm saying. So he might have he like, seems voice quite... problems. He might have voice problems. <laughs> That might you, just be how he speaks. You have he urinated on my jacket. Exactly. I imagine him. Why is he addressing <laughs> the monkey like an equal? You on my jacket. Like that. I didn't say it like that. You it did. wasn't that you racist, did a funny to be accent. honest. Anyway, I have to say. And Paul's and just looked up the animal playing in a tree just above his chair. It's playing around, whistling all <laughs> over the place. Do you think that's what we would be like if we weren't tied down by rules? We'd just be peeing away up in trees. Yeah. I would be. I know that. Um, we spent quite a lot of time with this article. Perhaps these are blessings, he joked, continuing his address amid laughter from the audience of journalists. I, that wouldn't really be a joke in this country. I'm hoping it's some sort of Zambian thing. There's not really much more, except that it says there are also many species of antelope and birds in the state house grounds. You'd probably, which isn't very interesting. You'd probably just think that um, if, if the president or whatever of this country said, perhaps these are blessings, you just think, what a freak! <laughs> Why would he think that? <laughs> it's just a strange thing to say. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's that. Story done, you know. Um, okay, 11,000 hens were found in a farmer's mass grave. Uh, in Sweden, a uh, country you don't really hear from very much, I would say. Um, on June 26, a Swedish man un was under investigation for burying 11,000 chickens in a mass grave, which is pretty <laughs> unbelievable, to be honest. He, did, he didn't alert authorities that he was going to be burying the chickens, and he said that he wasn't himself at the time of the incident. Do you reckon he was high? Do you reckon he was intoxicated, James? I think he just wanted some fun. Just wanted some fun, so he cooped up a load of chickens. Cooped up, there's a little joke there. Uh, he cooped up a load of chickens in a room without a fan. In fact, here it says, Jan... No, it wasn't without a fan. There was a fan. There was a fan. Okay, this is the whole issue with this story. Jan Eric Einarsson, who uh, formerly served as a municipal commissioner in Orkeljunga, said he was in a state of shock when he came home one day and found a fan had broken in a building um, containing 11,000 dead birds. <laughs> it makes it sound like the fan being broken is the bit that is so shocking. I think that is the main issue, article. though. No one cares about the chickens, really. They I'd care, have to say. They care about the fact that the fan broke down. I think, you know, we need to co be concerned about today's machinery, whether this is going to be a common issue now. Maybe the fan breaking down led to many of the chickens committing suicide. Maybe... With the state of this world today. Maybe it fans... Would, are the problem. That's the third lesson of today. Think about it. Think Extend. about it. Extend. Right there. Okay, let's carry on. Uh, third story. Do you want to read this one? Well, that was quick. Okay. Mm. Watermelons and breasts. 
A group of Bulgarian women are suing a drink company over an advertisement that portrays a bikini-clad women's breasts as watermelons with the slogans, Watermelon season is here! Uh, we've got a little picture for you. Just this is the ad. This is all it is. It's now! That was a scary prediction of when it was, the pitch was going to come. I, 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 yeah. I, 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 anyway, I, 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 it goes on to say, the spokeswoman says, you can't walk down the street now without some asshole shouting, hey, nice watermelons, and trying to see if they are ripe. Which <laughs> I is know, totally stupid. I can walk down the street quite easily. Yeah. I know what she's saying from a woman's perspective, <laughs> but I don't that. really, I've never seen that happening exactly. in the street with a woman. Plus, she says, uh... Trying and trying to see if they're ripe, ripe which you couldn't really ascertain expect. from somebody's like looking at your at your breasts. You can say, hmm, he's trying to think that they're he's trying to figure out whether they're ripe. They might have worked out a system. They're not quite ripe. They're a little they're a little off, I would say. Yes. Well, they might be overripe, depending how old they are. Saggy watermelons. Does anyone want that? I don't. Find out more tomorrow. Let's carry on. Okay. Um, she also says, uh, uh, the 13... Oh, sorry. That doesn't make any sense. 13 women Does. claim that the ad encourages sexism and promotes the country's men. Promotes the country's men. It's not an advertisement for men. Who say... Uh, and the 13 women say the men in this country are... Well, not in this... It's obviously in America. There's, she, oh, sorry, I'm being really messy with this. But she says that the men in America are so, already bad enough. It's a complete pandemic in America. Men are becoming more and more sexist. They're, in, they're substituting fruit for breasts. It's ridiculous. Well, Ascertaining ripeness look, the, the, from the street. I think there's only one thing to say. It might be time to move. Ta-ta, ladies. That's what it says at the bottom of the article. It doesn't make any sense. Maybe if we change the food... Maybe. Maybe that would like so. There's maybe a bit of change to the fruit. Kind of Swedish meatballs. Mm. Maybe that guy could substitute some of his dead chickens. What's something then like a melon? Then it would be melon? an advertisement for dead chickens. Something like a melon. Melon. Well, if you've got any ideas, please comment. Tell us what you think could be <laughs> substituted instead of melons. Learn. That's lesson number four. Love. Five. Yep. Yeah. See ya. That was good. Oh, here's a video of a man breaking open a melon with his head. One, <laughs> two, three. Go, 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 He's just left, so now it's time for the private session with me. Sorry? Okay. Okay. What did you do?